In my best estimate, I think at least 95% of the people who watch my videos are not sound designers, which I love. It's always been my goal to bring the world of game audio to new ears. But if you're part of that majority, I'd like to quickly catch up on something that the sound designers watching this already know, which is that over the last roughly 10 years or so, a new stylistic trope has exploded in popularity. Everything is starting to sound very rumbly. Okay, back to Alfheim Tower. You were saying? I mean, I'm not, I don't think I'm crazy, right? Like, I hear this a lot of places. It's very common now to hear this kind of low rumble. Yeah, absolutely. I, I don't have a name for it, um, but I call it in my head and I call it to other people, the, the low mid uh, a sound, um, low, low mid meta, <laughs> I guess. It's definitely a trend right now and it's been becoming a lot more so. For one thing, it sounds cool as hell. <laughs> uh, you could always just point to that and that could be your only reason. There's also a, a functional reason for some of this, I think. As sound designers for video games, we are thinking about like who's going to be listening to it on a television as well as people who are going to be listening to it on a hi-fi setup. And I think um, if you're adding weight to something, that's kind of a good place to put your frequencies a little bit more at. But yeah, it's, it's, it, it is everywhere right now. <laughs> Josh is totally right that we as designers have no choice but to accommodate all the possible ways that our art is going to be consumed. A graphic designer would do the same thing with a logo. It has to read just as well on a billboard as it does in the top corner of a cell phone screen. After all, a real unaltered recording of an explosion sound has a powerful low bass thump that you'd hear beautifully in a movie theater or in your nice headphones, but your tiny phone speaker can't replicate that frequency very well at all. It would sound kind of like a sad little balloon pop or something. So that is for sure one of the reasons that this modern rumble style has become more common. But I don't think that's the entire story. I think another element to this is, just as Josh pointed out, purely aesthetic. Super modulated, warbly, low mid-range just sounds very cool, and on top of that, it seems to work well in a staggering number of different types of sounds. It can work as a layer in a magic spell, a cinematic scripted event, a sci-fi weapon, an explosion, or really any kind of impact. At first, all these different uses may seem like all the more reason to practice and learn this style, but they're also the biggest danger in using it. Just like any stylistic choice that you make as an artist, if you use it a little bit too often, you may end up in that world of sameness, which is where none of us want to be. If all of the mechanical sounds, explosions, weapons, cinematics, and impacts in your game have the same rumbly, low, mid-range style, then how does that feel to the player? If everything in your game sounds intense and dramatic, then really, by comparison, nothing sounds intense and dramatic. But either way though, whether you want to use this style sparingly or everywhere, we've all got to learn how to make it. And to be honest with you, before making this video, I had absolutely no idea how people were making this stuff and I'd never even really tried it myself. But luckily, I do know a lot of people who are much better at sound design than I am. So do you ever like make this uh, this kind of low mid rumble stuff? I'm, I really do feel like I'm terrible at this, honestly. I actually will, won't say that I'm the, the best at making this stuff. Some of my peers are like really badass at it. <laughs> if you put an envelope follower on FabFilter Volcano, then it'll detect whatever transients are coming in and open the filter up a little bit. And it gives, gives, that, it, gives it that movement. And you can put that on almost anything and it'll have a noticeable effect. So you could put it on liquidy stuff. Um, synth, synth source, of course, uh, works really well. Making whooshes focus on that that area, 180 to like 400 or so. That's where the the weight of any sound really is going to be. Everybody thinks the bass is where it's at, but it's really the bass will sound weak without those mids. Okay, Josh had some great tips in there, so let's dive in and you can watch my attempt to make this style. So just to show you that you don't need any expensive plugins for this entire design, I'm just going to use only the stock effects that come free with Ableton Live. You should be able to find these in any digital audio workstation. For my source material, I'm just going to record a few seconds scrunching up some notebook paper. Very simple. Next, I want to make these transients pop out a little bit more. So I'm going to pitch down the sound and add a gate effect to give it some more dynamic range. Essentially, what I'm trying to do here is to get it to sound more poppy and alive. Next, I'm going to add some modulation of phase, filters, and saturation. This is the step where things kind of get crazy. I did a little bit of band phase shifting as well as some EQ modulation and saturation 
Because of the way that we're gonna shift the phase of the sound here, you're gonna notice that a lot of the poppy transients from before now sound a bit like laser guns because of the way the frequencies are smearing out over time. We're also gonna get closer to that low mid frequency range that we want. Next, I'm gonna resample this sound. Essentially, this means I'm gonna record it to an audio track and then treat it again like a blank slate with a whole host of new effects. This is a super great and versatile technique that I don't do often enough. I can already read the criticism. It's not versatile. Mm. You're not versatile. Yeah. So I'm gonna record this sound to an audio track and then run it through some chorus, multiband compression, EQ, and a little modulation of the stereo image as well. We're close, but we're certainly not there yet. So I'm gonna pitch the whole sound down again and run it through yet another round of modulation and filtering. Then I'm gonna add a little bit of reverb at the end to make it shimmer. As always, if you'd like to see a long form track by track breakdown, the lesson videos on Patreon are for you. Now, I think that's cool, but really in context, a layer like this might be used in something like a magic spell. So to give you a better idea, here's the same sound, but with a few extra contextual layers. I'm all right with that for my first real attempt at this style, but I've got a long way to go. In my first sound design job at Avalanche Studios, we used to do a mix review every Friday where you'd play all the sounds you worked on that week for the whole team and they'd give you feedback and critique your designs. If I played this at mix review, I think the feedback would be that it's a little bit muddy, it feels perhaps a bit too squashed and over the top, and it doesn't have as much cohesive movement as it should. I think it sounds right now like a bunch of effects, not really its own sound individually yet. But just like any new technique, I'll keep trying this and eventually I'll make something I'm happy enough with to create my own little personal library that I can then pull from when I want to. But now that we know a little bit more about this modern rumble style, where does that leave us? Well, I love this style at the end of the day. I think these techniques can all sound awesome and really bring punchiness and power to your designs. But I also hope that we don't start to hear it so frequently in games and movies that it loses its power and novelty. To my own personal taste, I feel like this style should be used a little bit more like hot sauce than salt. I like the idea of putting a dash of it here and there on the moments that I really want to make shine, rather than just layering it into every single sound. But you may disagree, and that's of course cool. That's what makes your own style unique. Don't listen to me. Fire up your microphone and make some of your own crazy low mid-range explosions. It's fun, trust me. I'll see you next time.